Hey everybody, welcome to In the Red Zone. Sean Brown, Michael Johnson here, and it is time for week eight college football picks. Had a great week seven. You went 11 and nine? 11 and nine. I was 12 and eight, so pretty good. Um, but before we get into talking about last week and all that, let's take the time to recognize our sponsor, our official betting partner, BUSR. Please go check out BUSR.com slash red zone. When you make a deposit, you can get some free play. The promo is always kind of changing, so go sign up and see what you can get now. And uh, Hey, week seven. Yeah. What'd you think? Um, it was okay. So here's the deal. I'm moving. <laughs> My <laughs> wife and I are closing on a house uh, tomorrow. All this YouTube money. Just, uh, yeah. just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Uh, but we're moving, and I didn't get to watch a lot. I watched. I watched some of the uh, Texas Oklahoma State game. Texas just they're they're becoming known for just blowing leads in the second yeah. half. Um, 41 and seven, 41 to seven. They've been outscored in the fourth quarter. Yeah, the games. second half just doesn't doesn't yeah. come with them. So, right. Um, but good. I mean, win. I started seeing already people wanting to run Sarkeesian out after half a season. You, that's got to stop. Watching that, that game though, stop. there were some drives that I just kind of scratched my head at, and I don't know if it's Casey Thompson just not reading what mm -hmm. he's supposed to read with the defense. Um, but man, they just uh, maybe just let him get some of his players in there, give him a couple of recruiting cycles. Um, but let's not take away from Oklahoma State because yeah. they have a great oh, defense totally. and they played really good. Totally, they played lights out. They played better than but, Texas. But I mean, they also, you know, Spencer San Sanders is still inconsistent. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's even some Pope fans that are calling for Shane Illingsworth, you know, to to be the yep. the quarterback. So. He um, came through there late in the game, though, with that yeah. touchdown run. I mean, yeah. you can't bench a kid like that who's, yeah. you know, who gets and you a win got a, like that. They've got a really good running back. Um, you know, and I don't think you get any better with Illingsworth. I, I just both have strengths and weaknesses, and he's but a the better, overall, they're Illingsworth to me is a better pure passer. Mm -hmm. But Spencer Sanders has the ability to be mobile. Right, gives if, you that. Run if threat. play breaks down, he can use his legs. Um, he just and makes he's a gamer. Mistakes. He, yeah, his, but he's he he's severely inconsistent, which yeah. may end up biting them. Um, we'll see if both teams can be. Both Oklahoma teams can be uh, yeah. in undefeated. I don't know when the last time that happened when they met each other. I don't know. They still have a long road to go though right. before we get right. to that. But yeah. yeah, that's the hope anyway. Yeah. If you're if you live in Oklahoma, yeah. Uh, Kentucky and Georgia. Georgia just kind of dominated that game. Yeah. I mean, it was uh, you know for the picks wise, we both had Kentucky. Yeah. And they then covered. Georgia scores, but then they miss the extra point, and that mm -hmm. makes it a push. Yeah. And luckily. I mean, I'm rooting for Kentucky. I'm like, go blue, go blue, because they score on the very last play of the game, yeah. and that covered. And so that's what we, you know, that's what I cared about most. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I know Georgia didn't want to give up that touchdown, but, yeah. you know, but, you know, and I say that, I thought coming in here today, like, this is the game we were probably going to talk about the most, because it was the best, really the best game of the weekend. And then Tennessee Ole Miss happens. Yeah. And that was chaotic and yeah. crazy. Yeah, I caught, um, I wasn't able to, I don't have SEC network, um, I know, I know, I, <laughs> I have a, a college football channel, and I don't have SEC network, but um, no, I caught some of the Memphis Navy game, and Navy uh, had like an eight minute drive, mm -hmm. and you know, it, if they could just get some better players, you yeah. know, they're just never really going to be that great, but, but watching Memphis, um, I have no clue why they're not being offered to to be in one of these Power Five conferences. They've got the stadium for it. Yeah. Um, they've got the market. I mean, Memphis is a decent market. Yeah, it's all right. I think when you really compare Memphis to the other markets that are available, though. Yeah. And then the Memphis market is so really kind of close to the Nashville market. Yeah. And so it's just, it's a kind of an unfortunate thing for them, I think. I just thought so. certainly the Big 12 would, would pull yeah. them in because Memphis, I mean. They still might, I mean, yeah. depending on how far they go. Yeah. Briefly, I want to talk about, just briefly, I know you didn't get to see it. I watched, was heavily watching the Tennessee game. And forget the game. I mean, if you watched, if you're a Vols fan, you're an Ole Miss, you watch the game. But I'm going to say this, though. This, this stuff with, Faking injuries has to stop. Yeah. The NCAA has got to crack down on this. And to me, I know you disagree with me on this, but I think it needs to be like a heavy, heavy penalty. A 15-yard penalty, 
players out for the whole quarter, maybe the whole half, and I think the coaches start needing to get fined. And, and, and I'm talking about some of these you can't tell, but when you got a guy standing there on the defensive line with his hands on his hip and a coach over there doing this, and the guy drops down, that should be a penalty and he should be ejected. I mean, I'm sorry, it's just I, wrong. And both teams did it. Yeah. Both teams did it. And both coaches should be fined for it, but it's got to stop and the NCAA's got to take get hold of this. I don't disagree with maybe a fine because um, it's the same, it's basically the same thing as a flop in the NBA. Mm-hmm. And they're cracking down on that, or they, they say they are. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I, personally, I think a quarter, the rest of the quarter is a bit much, but the end of a drive, or uh, till the, the end of the series. drive, the, the series, you know, I, I have no problem with that. Same thing on a targeting. I well, think maybe the, tears miss on a, the next series because yeah. if you're doing it but on third down here, and yeah. you're only missing one play, here's, that's not enough. Here's the thing. If there's no, if there's no fine when it comes to things like targeting, which obviously to, to the NCAA is the worst penalty because right. they, they're kicking guys out well, of the game. Well, you're not going to fine players because they're – Right, athletes, but, but the coaches, the, the program, and right, the coaches but, would but get that whole, right. If, this whole flopping thing, faking injury, this is on coaches. Yeah, this is on the coaches. These yeah. are on the coaches who are making millions I mean, of dollars. So you can find them, and I me, think they it's should. Just, they've found a way to. It's gamesmanship, and it's them just trying to play within in the rules. And um, yeah, I don't like it, but at the end of the day, it's it's. The rule is there, you know, and yeah. the player does have to come off. So they changed it within, the, you know, the last decade, I think. Well, um, they that, did change it to where that player has to come off for safety reasons. If he right. really is hurt, he needs to get looked at. But, yeah, extend that. You know, if enough people get mad about it, then I, um, extend that to the to the rest of the series. That And, and yeah. I think as far as targeting, not to get too far into that, but I think there should be a tiered system with the targeting. Um to where maybe even the tier one, you know, being the the least uh, or the lesser uh, I, I, targeting. One thing I don't like about targeting is the defenseless player or the head and neck area. Yeah. Because to me, targeting is lowering your head and hit with the crown of your helmet. And it's launching. the one thing you should not ever yeah. do. Yeah. And but it's like some of these defenders are getting hit with. Well, he's a defenseless receiver. What do you expect him to do? Just let him catch it and run for 20 more yards? Right. I mean, you got to make a hit. It's a football. lot of these are bang-bang plays, right. and there have been some players that have been kicked out yes. of, of second halves and then the, the first half of the next game for really just egregious calls. And, and so that's why I think a tiered system with, you know, sure, kick him out the rest of the series or something. I think next but series allow, too. allow yeah. him to come back. That's not, you know, there's some guys that aren't looking to hurt somebody. They just, it's... You know, a quarterback drops down quickly or, yeah. you know, and can't really help that right. you get helmet to helmet in that situation. Well, you get a guy, so, you get a defender who's full tilt, chest up over their feet, running full tilt. Yeah. And then they're going out to make a tackle on the quarterback. And at the last second, the quarterback slides and he's already committed. And then he hits the helmet of the yeah. quarterback. But that should not be targeting because he, you can't stop on a dime. Yeah. These athletes are moving at, huge like fast speeds and they can't just stop especially when your chest and head is over top your feet and you're driving forward you can't stop that and the ball carrier can hit the defender just just about any way he wants just about every running back lowers his head but they never get called for targeting yeah and they should in my opinion so i I don't know it goes both ways but um i'd like to see him crack down on the injury thing yeah so uh we've got clemson (laughs) struggling with syracuse yeah. Um, Oklahoma, obviously, we'll get into that a little bit, but Caleb Williams coming in for his first start mm-hmm. looked really, really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, as good as a true freshman could go out and probably yeah. play. Um, just whipped up on TCU, which, um, you know. I, w- I kind of expected it to him to play both quarterbacks, and he didn't, and that really surprised me. Yeah. I mean, hats so. off to, to Lincoln Riley because that's not an easy call to make. I mean, well, when you've and, got an and, established quarterback like that. And OU's defense wasn't playing well, and TCU was scoring. And, yeah. and I think that TCU was keeping it close enough that you you put Rattler in one or two drives here and he d- it doesn't produce like Williams has, you got a tie game. Like, yeah. I don't think it was a point where you have, you could play two Yeah, there never really was because TCU seemed to kind of always, until middle of the fourth quarter, it seemed like they were well within distance. Yeah you know, um, striking distance, and then Oklahoma just kind of pulls away. Yep. They're late in the game, but um, last, yeah, I'm last, excited. Last big one um, we'll talk about real quick. Well, two real quick. One, LSU absolutely flat-out dominates Florida. 
Well, they didn't dominate. They won 40, 49, 49 to 42, 42, but their running back ran for like 287 yards, broke yeah. a school record. Um, I don't. Florida got problems. Yeah. Like serious problems. Other than that, yeah. Purdue beats Iowa. Yeah. Number two goes down. That's huge. We got to talk about that real quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, of course, Cincinnati bumps up to number two in the yeah. country, and mm-hmm. and you a know. lot of people who are detractors, Cincinnati wouldn't beat Alabama. I don't hey, care. Hey, they deserve it. If they're undefeated, they if they're undefeated at the end of the season, put them in the, the yes. college football playoff. Yep. I mean, and, dude, and I and I saw is... somebody somebody commented on uh, one of our videos and talked about how, you know, if Alabama beats Georgia in the SEC, then Alabama Georgia's in, Ohio State's in if they win out, Oklahoma's in, and Cincinnati's out. No, I don't think so. I I don't think you get two SEC teams in no. if Cincinnati's undefeated. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't think that happens this year. Yeah. So I think the winner of the SEC championship game goes, Cincinnati, and the other one gets left out. Cincinnati has proved their medal this year, yes. and they deserve a shot. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, uh, and then with Purdue, uh, I'll just say, you know, uh, Iowa is, is one-dimensional, and, and we see a lot of one-dimensional teams that are all offense and almost no defense. And what happens is you get one game where the offense stutters and your defense can't pull it through for you. Yeah. Iowa's the opposite of that. They've been all defense, mm-hmm. and they yes, they've had some games where their offense has been able to score some points, but this was one of those games where the offense couldn't get to turnovers yeah. because Purdue is uh, one of the best passing teams in the country. They don't commit penalties. Mm-hmm. They don't make mistakes. So when that defense couldn't generate the turnovers, they needed the offense to carry them that game. And you're always going to get that. When you're one-dimensional, you're always going to get one game where you the other the, – whether it's offense or it has to carry you. Yeah. Iowa didn't have the offense to carry them against Purdue, and that's yeah. why they lost. Yeah, last thing I'll say um, before we get into picks, Baylor is actually, oh, I mean, yeah. they're, they're kind of sneaking up there. I, I mean, I said that, remember uh, week five after Baylor was 4-0 but hadn't really played anybody, and I took a chance and took them. And I've watched three Baylor games so far, yeah. and I'm telling you what, they are clicking. They they got chemistry like they've no got, other team in the country. They've got one of the best defensive players in the country yeah. on on defense, and their offensive and, line is solid. Yeah, They're playing so really Oklahoma's well. going to struggle with them. I'm, I'm calling it now. Um, it's not going to be. A, I don't think it'll be a very big. Is spread. that game in Baylor at, or at Waco? Um, I don't that's remember. That's a good question. Sure. It, it probably is because Oklahoma started the year with a, a several home games. Yeah. I mean. I think like four in a row. So it's there. Oklahoma's going to be on a big stretch here, where they're yeah. they do have Kansas this week, and then I think yeah. a bye week maybe. Okay. Um, but then yeah. they've got you know Texas Tech, but they've got Baylor and uh, and OSU kind of pretty close together. So I'll tell you what. Tough. So this week we we'll go through the games. We'll get the picks here and in just Iowa a second. State. Iowa State. <laughs> we'll get to the picks here in just a second. Just going to say, you know this this week coming up could turn out to be just one of those weeks where you're glad you're watching college football. But on paper, not a lot of big matchups here. Yeah. Not, not a lot to be excited about. So it's kind of almost like a, uh, you know, personally, I'm going to watch maybe two or three games this week. I'm not going to sit and watch a whole bunch of games. Yeah. It's just a week I can take off, maybe get Christmas lights up early, something like that. Mm-hmm. But the following week, week nine, Huge, especially in the Big Ten, because that week we get Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan, Michigan State. Nice. The same week, and that's going to be huge. Yeah. So we kind of get a little bit of a break here, maybe. I mean, we could always have upsets, but yeah. yeah. And before we get into picks, make sure to like the video. And this Subscribe. week, this week we're gonna, we're gonna, oh, we're gonna ding a, <laughs> we're gonna hit a dinger ding on a, that subscribe ding a grand button. slam so off the, let's off go the ahead subscribe. and smash it. <laughs> Our subscriber count just has been going yeah. up and up and up um, more than it has since we started. We've I think, gained so. we've gained twelve hundred so far this year. Yeah, and um, I thought yeah. certainly by the end of the year I was like we'll get over seven thousand this year, <laughs> yeah, we're, and then yeah. we're, we're over se- almost seventy two hundred right now. Yeah. So yeah, so keep it please, going. please, please subscribe. Um, we we keep it as. Yeah. Uh, non-professional right. as possible. We don't. We're fans. We're yeah. fans picking we games. We don't do computers, but, but we're doing good now. I mean, yeah. we really are. And and you should go check out the my NFL picks. It's doing really well. I'm yeah. doing really good with NFL picks. Um, so if you like to bet on the NFL, go check that out. You and bet through uh, BUSR. Yes. Go go, go bet check them through, out. Uh, through yep. through them. And, and I'm going to point out one other thing right before we get to the picks because I mentioned in our top 25 video that I was going to bring this up. So I've spent a lot more time. Um, researching and trying to figure out 
I've been researching how the spreads are calculated. Mm -hmm. Been watching videos from guys who lead the sports books in Vegas and kind of describing how they do it. And maybe a lot of you already knew this, but I finally took the time to figure it out. And one of the sports book guys said, you know, these spreads are really based on the FPI rankings. Yeah. And so if you have a team that's ranked 100 and they're playing a team that's got a 93 rating, then the spread's seven. It seems very basic and easy way to set a spread, yeah. but it also is a way to get some easy money because that, that system's flawed in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, especially with a team like Clemson yeah. because Clemson in the past two weeks have been 14 point favorites. Yeah, they've got the talent, They've got all the tangibles and they've got a good top ranked defense. And so on paper, they should maybe be a, you know, ranked. They've been ranked at one point fourth in the FPI. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Clemson? And so, and they're still ranked up there high, but that's causing an inflated spread and it's, it's easy money. But I mean, if yeah. Clemson's a 14 point favorite, it's easy money right now because their offense is just not there. Yeah. They do have the recruits and the talent, but they're not playing that way. So when you pick up on these, um, and you see teams artificially inflated in their FPI ranking, it can make it uh, for some easy money. Yeah. So and Clemson, to me, has been easy money in the last few weeks. Yep. Okay, you ready to get started? I'm ready to get started. Week 8 picks. Here we go. 20 games. Got some notes here. We'll try to get through it and keep this definitely under an hour. But let's start with Coastal Carolina, three-point favorite against App State on Thursday night. Um, my notes here. Uh, Grayson McCall, a quarterback for uh, Coastal Carolina, has thrown for over 1,400 yards. 14 touchdowns, only one interception, so he's taking care of the football. They are averaging 554 yards per game and 48 yards, uh, 48 points per game. That's second, ranked second in um, all of college football. They are the third-ranked rushing offense. That's what surprised me when I started looking into this. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize that. Third-ranked rushing, rushing offense in the country, 20 touchdowns. They're averaging 6.64 yards per carry. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, their defense has only given up 15, 15 points per game. That is, uh, I, I call that um, a mirage because Coastal Carolina hasn't played anybody. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at who they've played so far, and I know they're undefeated, but, I mean, really, if you want to prorate that or you want to handicap that, you should probably consider them giving up about 25 points per game yeah. against a team um, like App State. Um, and then you have... Um, like I said, Coastal Carolina's beaten Buffalo, UMass, Kansas, Louisiana, Monroe, and Arkansas State. Um, App State, they lost to Miami and Louisiana, really the only two, I would say, decent teams they've played. Mm -hmm. And then they've beaten Marshall, Georgia State, and Elon. Marshall, you know, usually is pretty up there. But um, And then App State averaging 31 points per game, 436 yards per game. So App State absolutely got destroyed by Louisiana last week, 41-13 yeah. um, or something like that. It was ugly, um, and they were the favorite. Uh, here, you know, because Coastal Carolina hasn't really played anybody, they are going to App State. App State plays really good at home, um, but Coastal Carolina is a three-point favorite. I just think the fact that they have the third-ranked rushing offense to go along with their passing, yeah. I, I just don't think App State can keep up. So yeah. this might be a shootout, but I think they Coastal Carolina covers three. Yeah, so Grayson McCall, um, he hasn't thrown a ton of passes when com uh, compared to – some of the other kind of more prolific passers, but he's he's thrown over 109 passes. He's at 79.8 percent completion percentage, yeah. and he's averaging he's number one in the country in yards per attempt, 13.6. If you go back and look at the uh, Lincoln Riley led offenses when Baker and Kyler were there, and then when Tua was at um, uh, Alabama. Their, their yards per attempt were right in line. I mean, yeah. like 13, 14 yards per attempt. Um, Grace McCall on adjusted yards per attempt is 15.7. That means any ball that was dropped, any ball that was catchable, um, they take that into consideration. Or anyone that's not catchable, they kind of take those out um, in the adjusted yards per attempt. So anyone that, that is catchable and, and is, is caught, basically, yeah. um, he's got 14 touchdowns, one interception on the year, and has a rating of 234.3. Wow. Um, that's good for first in the country. Nobody even breaks 200. Um, so you got to consider he hasn't thrown as many passes. He's probably thrown... Uh, 50% of the passes on some of these other guys that just sling the ball. Because they um, have that rushing offense. They don't right. need to, really. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. and that's, you know, um, we'll look at, 
uh, let's see. For, uh, Memphis's quarterback has thrown 227 passes. Kenny Pickett's thrown 205. Adrian Martinez, 211. So there definitely are other quarterbacks who have thrown a ridiculous amount of passes yeah. this year. Grayson McCall just seems to kind of take his shots when needed, um, and then they play the ground game. So they're very well balanced, and I, I'm, I'm taking them this week. He's got half the attempts, but the, almost the same amount of yardage. Yeah. So that's incredible. Yeah. That's what's incredible about that. Yeah. For, over 1,400 yards. On only yeah, I don't attempts. have... Well, actually... 108 attempts, I believe. Well, okay, so... 87 of 109 is what he so, is. So, Matt Corral sitting at number 20 in the country at 1,728 yards. So, okay. And then you go up from there. Brennan Armstrong from Virginia has 2,800 yards on the year. So, okay. um, so yeah, he is sitting down there, but the, the yards per attempt is just insane to me that he's... Averaging 13 yards. Yep. I mean, per so you attempt. Got, you got coastal. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely taking coastal. Okay, next game. Because, two... well, on that as well, um, I think one more note I had App State is 72nd in total defense in the country. Yeah. So they'll yep. get lit up. Yep, absolutely. Okay, next game. Tulane is at SMU. SMU is a 14 point favorite. Uh, really, what you have to look at here is SMU, 7th ranked offense in the country, 78th ranked defense, Tulane, 67th ranked offense, twelfth or 121st ranked defense. Now, they had to play Oklahoma and Ole Miss, mm -hmm. so, who put up decent points in yardage. So yeah. that kind of skews that a little bit. But SMU has a, a huge offense. Yeah. I mean, this is one of them where 14 is not even a big enough spread. It should be 24. Yeah. I mean, it really should. This is, uh, to me, this is a lock for me. I'm going to take SMU to cover 14. Um, I think they do that fairly easily. Yeah. He, at home. Um, yeah. 121st ranked defense for Tulane. Um, and Tanner Mordecai is tied in the country still um, at number one for touchdowns thrown um, at 26. And he's got seven interceptions. Um he can run a little bit. They they don't typically. He's got 31 <laughs> attempts running and, and one rushing touchdown. Um, so him and uh, Bailey Zapp are, are from Western uh, Kentucky are sitting kind of kind of similar. Um, yeah. But he's got 18, 39 yards on the year. Um, he's playing really good. I mean he he'll he'll probably make the NFL. I mean, somebody will take a chance on him. Yeah. 71% completion percentage. I just don't see how Tulane um, keeps up. I think no. that that game against Oklahoma was the best thing that they'll they'll have this year. Yeah, they've only won one game. I think they're one yeah. and five. So yeah. yeah, SMU. All right, next game is number two Cincinnati, seven point favorite against Navy. Uh, some notes here: Cincinnati has the 18th ranked defense. They are plus eight in turnover margin. That is second in the country. They're ranked first in red zone defense, only giving up nine scores on 16 attempts. They've given up six rushing touchdowns and three passing touchdowns uh, when the other team gets in the red zone. They are ranked first in pass efficiency defense. Um, the only thing with this, though, uh, and I'm taking Cincinnati to cover seven, but the way Navy plays, mm -hmm. they might be able to hang on. They might win the time of possession and limit – Cincinnati's number of attempts on offense. Yeah. Because I think what you could see with Navy possibly is that they, you know, they're going to have to start on their own 15 or 20, and they might be able to drive the ball down the field. Yeah. I just don't think they're going to be able to get in the end zone, but they're going to take a lot of time off the clock. Yeah. And it's going to limit Desmond Ritter and Cincinnati, their number of attempts. And for Cincinnati at this point of the season, I mean, you know, they're the team that has to win with style points. They yeah. got to go out and win this game 42 to 7. Yeah. They really do. We said it last week and yeah. they, they did it. And they did. Yeah. Yes. So Navy, I'll, I'll just tell you, um, you know, ever since getting blown out by Air Force, um, they kept it within eight against Houston. Uh, they kept it, they won, uh, they beat UCF. That's their only win of the season. Um, they kept it within seven with SMU, who's got a really high-powered right. offense. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they scored half as many points as Memphis did at Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, but like you said, I mean, this is at home. The last game they played at home was against SMU, who has... SMU just doesn't have a defense at Cincinnati. Right. So that's the big right. difference there. That, yeah. yeah, but um, Navy just has the opportunity to hold on to the ball, like you yes. said. Um, my thoughts are pretty much in line with you on this, but um, I just think that seven, I could see. 
I know years ago um, Oklahoma played Army, and I think they beat them by like seven because Army mm-hmm. would just yeah. they just held on to the ball yeah. and, and just kept. Now Navy does throw the ball. They're not they don't run a strictly little, option, a very but, little bit. Yeah. Um, they average fifty yards passing per game, yeah. um, and then they they I think they're like two fifteen on the ground per game, okay. but. Um, so very little do they throw the ball, but they will in, in some, and I think they throw it um, a little bit more than Army does. But um, yeah, I just I see Cincinnati just just you know, it's going to be a tough game for them because that that option is never easy to defend. To me, um, I, I'll take this as another lock. I mean, along with the SMU game, I just think Cincinnati knows what they got to do. They got to win big, and they yeah. will win big. Okay, uh, next well, game. Hold, what you had it at minus seven. It's minus seven. That's you what. sure you didn't miss a two? Is it minus 27? Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Minus 27. I'm still taking Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, man, that's a... Big, but I'm going to take Cincinnati. That's big. I'm going to take Navy in that just because, um, you know, just, just how... I know Cincinnati's probably better than SMU at this point. We'll see in a few weeks, but... Um, 27 does make a big difference, and just being able to hold on to the ball. Um, you know, Cincinnati, um, first in pass efficiency defense, but that doesn't really help them in this. Yeah. Um, what's Do you know what their rushing defense no, is? No, I tried to look at it, and they didn't have that as part of the stats thing. Like, they didn't have a rushing def- defense rankings. Okay. Um, I looked for that because that was what I was curious about. Yeah, and I'd like to see where they're at against the spread, um, either team. I mean, I think Cincinnati is kind of up there. Yeah, they're 5-1 and one against the spread. Um, I'll stick with Navy. I mean, 27 against a... a Against an option team is just, it's pretty tough. It's, okay. it's tough to do. Okay, next one. Oklahoma, 38-point favorite at Kansas. Just some quick notes here. Kansas, 126th ranked defense in the country, giving up 488 yards per game. Might give up 800 to Oklahoma, honestly. Yeah. Um, OU is, the, is ranked fourth in red zone offense. They have been in the red zone 41 times. They've scored 40, 30 touchdowns, 10 field goals in, in uh, 41 attempts in the red zone. Oklahoma all day, yeah. way over 38. I mean, this one, another one that I think is easy. Yeah. Easy. Um, Caleb Williams just makes them a completely different team than Spencer Rattler did. Um, and and you just hear of stories of Caleb Williams walking down the, the sideline to every single position group um, and, and just saying, you know, come on, guys, we're going to win this game. Uh, at, at halftime, the offensive line was meeting in one of the end zones, and in the middle of that huddle was Caleb Williams. That's a true freshman yeah. that just, I mean, he's got winning on the mind. He's got his teammates on the mind. Um, and the team seems to play better when he's out there on the field. So um, I just, I, I, man, I feel, I feel bad for Spencer Rattler. I mean, he's come in here, and, and yeah, he's made some mistakes. but Well, he's um, going to get a play in this he, game. He has, yeah, he will. That's yeah. true. Um, like we said earlier in the, in the show, you know, Oklahoma didn't really pull away till later on, and you kind of thought TCU could maybe score here and yeah. make it a game, but um, but they didn't. Yep. Um, but I would say the only thing that concerns me about this game, and I'm not I'm not changing my pick. I'm taking Oklahoma, but the only thing that concerns me about this is this is a game where I could see Lincoln Riley like basically alternating every other series because they maybe pretty much are going to happy. dominate this game. Yeah, and so if you play and. I'm not as confident that Rattler's, Rattler's going to move him down the field every possession and score the way Williams does. So yeah. that could end up keeping it where they win by 35. I yeah. mean, that is possible. Here's I will stick thing. with OU, though. Here's the thing. Midseason, Kennedy Brooks has come alive. Marvin mm-hmm. Mims has come alive. Um, there's been some other players. Mike, Mike uh, oh, crap. Uh, Mike Woods from Arkansas, he's kind of come alive here. And, and then Jaden Hazelwood having three touchdowns. Um, not as many yards as you'd like um, Hazelwood to have with a three-touchdown game, but he's a red zone threat. I mean, he's yeah. a taller wide receiver. I'd like to see this game Austin Stogner get the ball a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Eric Gray got his first rushing touchdown as a Sooner. Unbelievable. It's yeah. the first one. I know. You got OU? I've got OU. Okay, yeah. let's yeah. move on I to think the... they. I think they definitely take care of business. Because right. I think they have... I think they have their bye week after Kansas. I could be wrong. 
Okay, let's move on to Northwestern against Michigan. Michigan is a 21-point favorite. Michigan has the seventh-ranked rushing offense in the country, 21 touchdowns, 5.4 yards per carry. Sorry, they have Texas Tech next in oh, okay. their bye week. Okay. Yep. Uh, so Michigan, seventh-ranked offense, rushing offense. Northwestern just not good this year. Yeah. Um, just really not good. And, you know, Michigan fans have been kind of mad at me because of where I have them ranked in the top 25. But the reality is go out and destroy Northwestern and, you know, prove it once again. Your time's coming because the following week you get Michigan State. So, um, you know, you beat Michigan State, you beat Penn State, you beat Ohio State, you're up there. I mean, yeah. you really are. You're in the top top four. So, hey, Michigan, I got you covering 21. Don't let me down. I do too. Um, they've got a bye week after this. Um, I know that for sure now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Northwestern did go out and get the win against uh, Rutgers, but they got housed by Nebraska um, two weeks before. So I've definitely got Michigan. I think that uh, I think they're on a pretty good roll and. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully this isn't a trap for them. Yep. Okay, next one. Illinois is at Penn State. Penn State, 23 and a half point favorite. Illinois is plus eight in turnover margin. They're ninth in the country. They have eight fumble recoveries, five interceptions. Penn State, second in red zone defense. Um, the opponent has been in the red zone 19 times. They've only given up 11 scores, four rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, and the rest were field goals. Um, so Penn State's defense getting it done. Uh, bend but don't break kind of uh, philosophy there. Yeah. Illinois, I, you think Illinois is going to struggle to score here. Um, but for some reason, they just, I don't know why, but my gut is they scare me in this one. Penn State wins the game, obviously, but I, I don't know if they cover 23 and a half. I'm going to reluctantly take Penn State to cover here. Penn State is 3-1 and one against the spread at home, and... Let's see where Illinois is as far as the away team. Uh, They are one and one, so only two away games so far for them. Um, I'm taking Penn State. I just think they're that much better than Illinois. Um, Okay. Yeah, not much to say about that. Okay, next game. Wake Forest is a three-point favorite against Army. Army is the second-ranked rushing offense uh, in the country, having scored 21 touchdowns, 4.7 yards per carry. Um, that's really the biggest stat here. Of course, Wake still undefeated. Uh, yes, because they beat Syracuse. Um, they got a showdown coming up with Pitt. Unfortunately, though, I think Army wins this game. Yeah. I, I just it, it just feels like because of that, Wake is not. Uh, I mean, they're not great on defense. Yeah. Army's rushing at- attack, that option, it's just impossible to stop. Yeah. And Army's been able to hang close with just about everybody. I think Wake Forest falls this week. I would take Army on the money line, yeah. so I'll take them in the points. Yeah, you're not kidding about the um, their Wake Forest defense. They're 90th in the country in rush defense, 91st in total defense. So give me Army all day in that. Army's got the fifth-ranked total defense in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and Army is the least penalized team in college football. Yeah. They, are, they have almost no penalties. They're so disciplined. Yeah. And so that makes a difference as well. Mm-hmm. So I've got we'll go. Army. Okay. Yep. Kansas State is at Texas Tech. Texas Tech is a one-point favorite. A couple notes here. Kansas State lost has lost three straight, but they've been to Iowa State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Texas Tech has beat West Virginia 23-20, to but they lost to TCU 52-31, to and they lost to Texas 70-35. to So uh, Tech has beaten the teams they should beat, but they haven't they haven't been playing well against top rated teams. Yeah. Kansas State has lost against their best teams they've played, but they've hung in there. Yeah. Um the the question for me, honestly, we have to make a pick. I'm going to make a pick, but I would never bet on this game because the question is going to be, you know, Texas Tech is going to score. Can Kansas State keep up? Yeah. Um at one it's a pick 'em. I know we have some Texas Tech fans. I'm sorry. I hate to disappoint you, but I'm taking Kansas State in this. But I would not bet this game. It's just there's too many un- too unpredictable. It's really hard to gauge this matchup. Um, so I'll, I'll you know lay off of it if you can. Yeah, I'm going to look real quick at rush defense because Deuce Vaughn, um, I mean, he's a firecracker. And if they, if they struggle um, with the rush, Mm-hmm. That's going to be, yeah, they're 92nd in rush defense, and that's I'm pulling that from team rankings. I know mm-hmm. you go to NCAA.com and look at their stats. They're going to be different than yeah. 
you know, sports reference or team rankings. They, they're all different. But team rankings I like. They have the against the spread records and stuff. But yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the home team in this one. I'm going to take Texas Tech. Tech. Okay. Yep. I mean, I, I, it is a toss-up for me. Yeah. So I, it can go either way. So yeah. it doesn't surprise me that we're split on that one. Yeah. Okay, uh, next game. Oklahoma State is at Iowa State. Iowa State is but, a six. Well, before, so between the two quarterbacks, um, Henry Columbi and Skylar Thompson, they have nine touchdowns and six interceptions between both of them. That's terrible. On the year. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. So it, it may be a very boring game. Okay. All right, now let's move on yep. to Oklahoma State at Iowa State. Iowa State is a six and a half point favorite. Iowa State, the third ranked defense in the country, only giving up 252 yards per game. Ten defensive, tu- uh, they've given up ten offensive touchdowns on the season. They are the uh, sixth fewest penalized team, 27 penalties for 202 yards, so they are pretty good in that area. For Oklahoma State, they're the t- 19th ranked defense. Really, I thought they'd be ranked higher the way they've been playing, yeah. but they are the 19th ranked defense, giving up 300 yards per game, 11 offensive touchdowns on the year, and. Uh, but here's the telling one. Oklahoma State's defense has got 19 sacks on the season. That's wow. 15th ranked in the country. So they get to the quarterback. Yeah. And that has been a, a kind of an issue for Iowa State is keeping people off of Purdy. Yeah. And so um, Oklahoma State typically struggles going up to Iowa State. That's kind of been the what happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I think Oklahoma State finds a way to win the game. And I, and I think if their defense does it again. I think the offense does just enough to get them the win. So, I mean, Iowa State 6.5, shocking to me. I'll take Oklahoma State. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking to see how well they, they cover at home. Um, I've gone through this I know they times. didn't cover the first week of the season at home. Um, Oklahoma State's Iowa. perfect on the year. Um, Two and zero against the spread on the road. Um, I don't know why I'm not able to find Iowa State one and two at home against the spread. Um, I'm going to take Oklahoma State. Okay. I've got them originally. Um, I think they're on a roll, and I would love, I would love for both Oklahoma teams to be yeah. undefeated going into that. That would be good. Um, one of the things that's interesting is that uh, ESPN's matchup predictor has Iowa State at a uh, 78.2% chance of winning this game. Yeah, see, this is one... It's, that's not always right. No, and that, and that is... <laughs> Rarely like, is it right. And that's based on ESPN's FPI. Right. And, and I, I think it's flawed. Like, yeah. I just don't agree with it. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. So I think this is one of those where it just seemed obvious. I thought Oklahoma State would be the favorite. Yeah. And so uh, I got to take them. They're the dogs. I got to take them. Yep. Okay, next game. Oregon is at UCLA. UCLA is a one and a half point favorite. Oregon lost running back CJ Verdell for the season. That really changes them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really hurts them on offense. UCLA, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson has thrown for 13 touchdowns, and only two interceptions on the year. Nice. Oregon, their defense, we came into the season thinking they were going to be one of these best top yeah. ranked defenses. They're ranked 91st in the country. They're giving up 410 yards per game, 5.3 yards per play. Man. Awful. I mean, UCLA, give me them all day long. And I think one and a half is, I mean, I'd take that clear to six. I mean, I think UCLA just goes out and kind of whips Oregon. Yeah, UCLA is is 50% on the year against the spread at home. Um, check Oregon's here, Oregon on the road. Um, they're down there. They're one and one. Um, so both teams 50% as far as the situation against the spread, but... I've got UCLA. I think um, they got a pretty, uh, I'll say pretty good game. Um, they did get a, a win against Washington, which Washington won, has won one game this year. Yeah. They're not that great, but, um, you know, UCLA is a little bit better this year with Chip Kelly um, than they have in the past. So I've got UCLA. If this game was out of Oregon, I'd get Oregon the, an advantage here. But yeah. going down to UCLA, I mean, and losing C.J. Verdell, they might have a running back who can step in, but yeah. that's a big loss. Which L.A. and their college teams, I mean, they don't really get a whole a, a lot of uh, love, you right. know, from their city. They, right. they but um, I've got UCLA. Okay, uh, LSU is at Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a ten and a half point favorite. Ole Miss has the hundred sixth ranked defense in the country. They're terrible on defense. Uh, LSU has the top top ranked red zone offense in the country. Nineteen for nineteen wow. in red zone attempts. Now. 
I mean, they've made 19 red zone attempts compared to like Oklahoma making 40 red zone attempts. Yeah. So they don't get in the red zone a lot, but when they get down there, they score. Yeah. Um, the question is, can they slow down Ole Miss? Um, and what I really believe is, like I like Tennessee. That game was a close game. LSU on defense has a better defensive front than Tennessee. I think they're really going to get to Matt Corral. I really do. And I think LSU is going to cause him a lot of problems. Um, Ole Miss can't just keep surviving week in, week out like they have been. Yeah. You know, against Arkansas, against Tennessee. That, that's not going to happen. I mean, they, they are going to drop a game here, and I think it's LSU. I'm going to take LSU, especially with 10 and a half points. Yeah. Um, LSU has had a tough time covering on the road. And I think those year. players want to play for Coach O, who is uh, yeah, now, this is his last season it's now. It's his last season. They're um, going to buy him out. So they're going to want to win. And, and you know, per, from a personal perspective, I hope LSU wins out. And then I hope they go the route of Nebraska and Texas for the next two decades. Yeah. Because it's ridiculous that they're running him out of town after two years removed from winning a national championship. That's my opinion. But yeah. hey. Ole Miss is 1-1-1 one, one, and one against, uh, against the spread at home. Yeah. Um, but man, they they sure can score some points um, once they get on a roll. Who, man, I'm gonna stick with Ole Miss. I just okay. I, I know, yeah. Normally, when I put the the mental side of it into it, I end up getting it wrong, you know, with them wanting to play for for Ordron. But maybe he's the problem. I mean, you know, it took Joe Brady and and or the Joes, you know, mm-hmm. Joe, Joe Burrow and Joe Brady to to really get them and then three five-star wide receivers um, to get them a national championship. But he brought them in. He hired them. you got to give him credit I know, for that. I know. He you did. Know? Sure. <laughs> sure. But then the two years after, you don't, yeah. you don't really follow that up with anything. Sure. Um, so that's probably what they're wanting. They want to be like an Alabama that can constantly reload yeah. and, 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 you know, at least be in it. Yeah. At least, uh, you know... There are some teams that once a decade they'll they'll push for um, for competing for uh, they'll be a challenger, but the LSU's just not it. No, you know no, they're no. they I don't know. You'd you'd think you could follow that performance up with with something mm-hmm. not close to because that's one of the best offensive we'll ever see in the country yeah. um, in history. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Ole Miss. Okay. It's just my gut pick. Next one, Clemson is at number 10, Pitt. Uh, Pitt is a three-and-a-half point favorite. Clemson is a 24th ranked defense in the country, giving up only giving up seven offensive touchdowns in the country. That is second to only Georgia. Georgia's given up four offensive touchdowns. Um, so Clemson's defense is still really good, uh, despite the fact that they're not ranked and things like that. Pitt, 28th ranked defense, uh, giving up 319 yards per game, 16 touchdowns. Um, but Pitt has Pitt's defense, 21 sacks on the year. That's eighth. So they get to the quarterback. Yeah. And so I don't expect this to be a high scoring game. Yeah. What I do expect though, is Pitt putting up maybe 17. Yeah. And because Pitt's defense has been so good against the pass and been able to get to the quarterback and get a lot of sacks. I don't know if, Cle- I don't know how Clemson scores. I don't know yeah. how they get past six. I mean, I just don't, and I don't know. So. I don't know if, um, you know, besides Georgia, Kenny Pickett is just another right. kind of talent. Yep. So um, he's playing lights out this year. Uh, this his... decides the ACC, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, Pitt is the best team in the ACC, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, and right now it's Pitt and Wake Forest, and then you have you know Clemson there's with two losses, but they're not. They haven't lost in conference. So or did they? I don't remember. No. Pitt. Pitt lost to Georgia and or no Clemson lost to Georgia and and. Who's their second loss to? I forget. Um, hang on. I'm fixing a habit. I NC State. That. NC State. So they did lose in, in the second in, two overtime okay. game. All right. Well, anyway. And Pitt lost to Western Michigan. I mean, whatever. I just think this is this. They've, they've been better since this then. This is pitch year. Yeah. It's pitch year to win the ACC. Um, you know, I I do think this is a close game, but I think three and a half is manageable for Pitt. So I like I like Pitt. Yeah. Um, Clemson just still hasn't figured out their offensive woes, and you know, color me shocked that Ua Ungalele is just not what I thought he would be. Last year, right. I was sitting there saying that kid's going to win a Heisman, um, yeah. and I I don't think that nope. anymore. Nope. Nope. Yeah. 
I don't. I think that they they need to go out and recruit a quarterback. You won't get another Trevor Lawrence, but get somebody similar yeah. and just start a true freshman next year because that's that's the route you're going to have to go. Which Brent Venable saw this at Oklahoma. I mean, uh, you know, Oklahoma started off really really good, and then started to kind of slide a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then he of course took off when Mike Stoops got to. Yeah. Oklahoma. He didn't want to play second fiddle. Right. And understandable. And he shouldn't. He's the yeah. best defensive coordinator in football. Yeah. So understandable. Okay. So you got. I got Pitt. You got Pitt. Okay. Yeah. BYU is a one point favorite at Washington State. Um, <laughs> BYU two losses in a row. Uh, can they can they bounce back? Because losing can be contagious. Yeah. Uh, and you wonder about that. They have to go on the road after this loss to Baylor, and they have to play Washington State. Fortunately for Bay or BYU is Washington State's just not very good. Yeah. Um, so I got BC or BYU bouncing back. It's only one. It's a pick 'em. I'll, I'll give. I'll take BYU to bounce back after two losses and win a game. Yeah. Um, Washington State is two and three at home against the spread. Um, as a as the away team. Uh, let's see. BYU is. Do, 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 do. They are one and one on the road against the yeah. spread. Um, so their third, uh, their third away game. But I've got BYU. Um, it's one point. I yeah. think they win. You know, of course, by more than that. Okay. Tennessee is at Alabama. Alabama, 27 and a half point favorite, and I'm taking Alabama. Uh, I didn't really, I don't care about a lot of stats, but here's what I know. Alabama is mad after the loss to Texas a and They took it out on Mississippi State. Tennessee, I, I would have thought could go in there and be competitive and keep it within 27 and a half, but Hooker got hurt in that game. They carried him off. He couldn't walk. It looks like a knee injury. Yeah. So Joe Milton is your quarterback, and I'm telling you, I, I don't want to talk real negative about a player, but... The decision making that he his decision making is awful. Yeah. I mean, he's got tons of arm strength, tons of talent, but I mean on that fourth down, three seconds to or that that play with three seconds to go, and you got the ball on the 20 and he runs out of bounds, throw it to the end zone. What do you got to lose? Yeah. Even if it's intercepted, what give your team a chance and he just runs out of bounds and he doesn't have it upstairs. Yeah. He just doesn't. And I don't think Tennessee can hang with Alabama one bit with him at quarterback. So yeah. I got Alabama covering easy. I did too. I think I think this definitely is one that Tennessee has a bit of a hangover, you know, yeah. from from an, an emotional. Yeah. I mean, their fans were just abs- That game was so weird. Yeah. Just towards the end, I I wasn't able to watch, but I saw the videos, saw the oh, pictures. It was terrible. Mike was texting me live live streaming yeah. it to me basically. Thirty minute delay to play the last fifty four seconds of the game. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, and come on, Tennessee, come on. Yeah, you got to be like, better than that. I mean, yeah. seriously. You've got one of the best home crowds in the entire country. Um, and thank goodness it wasn't, you know, nationally televised. Right. Um, or at least, you the know, top, through one of the, yeah. the CBS yeah, the yeah. networks. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, man, you guys just got to do better than that. I right. know you want to be good so bad. Um, and it was probably frustrating seeing Ole Miss players go down that weren't really injured and slow the game up. Um, that's but, just... But Tennessee was doing it too. They were. Yeah, so. of course. Um, so, but anyway, I've got Alabama easily covering okay. that. San Diego State, uh, we got them in the rankings this week at 22, is heading to Air Force, and Air Force is a four-point favorite. I uh, hope you enjoyed your 15 minutes of fame, San, San Diego State, because I think Air Force comes out with the win. I think they cover the four. Air Force, especially playing at home, they're just a solid team. Yeah. And I got them, I got them winning the game. Hmm. Yeah, San Diego State coming off of a a, a thriller, nineteen to thirteen, two overtime game against uh, San Jose State right. um, at San Jose, and then they had a three overtime game against Utah. Thirty, they won thirty three to thirty one. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, they've tested their mentality this year. Yeah. Um, I just I think that San Diego State's better than Air Force. I mean. Uh, yeah, they beat Boise State 24-17. They beat Wyoming 24-14. They haven't really had much um, much competition in the last few weeks. Now they do and, have to go to Colorado Springs. It's a thin yeah, air. Yeah, that's true. West but Coast boys heading up to the mountains. I, mean, I just it's, it's different. I think that San Diego State outright wins the game, so okay. I've got them. Okay. 
Uh, Ohio State is a 19-point favorite against Indiana. Um, Ohio State's defense, 20 sacks on the season. That's 12th in the nation. Their uh, defense has scored five touchdowns. That's first in the country um, in scoring defense. Um, Indiana comes off, you know, they play close to Michigan State. They lose 20 to 15. They just aren't what, you know, they just aren't what everybody expected. They're not the same team as last year. Yeah. Um, Ohio State does sometimes struggle a little bit in the first half when they go to Indiana. Yeah. But they always come through in the second half, and I don't think it's any different. C.J. Stroud, now a Heisman uh, contender, he's, you know, last few games he's scoring five touchdowns per game. I think they continue on their role. Yeah. Um, and with that one loss to Oregon, they, I mean, they've got to they've got to be somewhat impressive too. I mean, yeah. they, they control their own destiny. They went out, they win the Big Ten Championship game, they're going. I mean, that's just the bottom line. They're yeah. so far high in the polls. I mean, because if they went out, they beat Penn State, Michigan State, and Michigan, and then probably Iowa. So you win those four games, you can't keep them out, I yeah. mean, even with one loss. So um, they control their own destiny. I think they go in and take care of Indiana, um, and I do think they cover the 19. Yeah, Indiana, um, they're 1-2 and two against the spread at home. Um, that's really all I've got to add to it. I just yeah. I think that um, Ohio State has kind of fixed some of their issues that they had early in the season. Um and I see them covering that. Okay, USC is at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a six and a half point favorite. Notre Dame coming off a bye week, um, and USC is just not. They're 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 above average. They're not terrible, but yeah. they're not a great team either. Uh, Notre Dame gets a week off to prepare. They're playing at home at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Um, they're definitely game. a touch touchdown better than USC. So at six and a half, give me Notre Dame. Yeah, um, Notre Dame. I'm looking for them as the home team against the spread. Um, I'm fixing to have it one and two against the spread at home, um, and then UCL or sorry USC as the away team. Um, I got to start putting these next to the game. They're two. They're they're perfect on the year on the road uh, as the away team against the spread. So whatever you want to do with that, but I've got, I've got Notre Dame. I think they win by at least a touchdown. Okay. Three more games. South Carolina is at Texas A&M, Texas A&M a 19 and a half point favorite. South Carolina struggled with Vanderbilt. I mean, they yeah. struggled. And so, I, I mean, Texas A&M after their two losses, they beat Alabama. They've got so much confidence mm-hmm. that they want to just keep on rolling. And I think they do. And I think th- I don't think 19 and a half is too much for Texas A&M. I think they cover that. Yeah, A&M had a, uh, a big win against uh, Missouri this last week. Um, South Carolina just lost to Georgia, lost to Kentucky. They beat Troy 23 to 14. They lost to Tennessee 45 to 20. And they beat Vanderbilt by one point. So Texas A&M easy in this yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. Two more games. NC State, three and a half point favorite at Miami. Um, <laughs> NC State's got one loss on the year. Um, I believe that was to, to Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. Um, some old Mi- or some uh, NC State fans kind of upset with me online because they're saying that NC State doesn't get their, get any respect. And they haven't really beat anybody. They've lost to Mississippi State, and their wins have been really, they haven't beat anybody. Um, this past week, Miami comes back. They beat back. ninth-ranked Clemson at the okay, time. At the time, but... <laughs> Now we know that's I know. not I know. that's not I as big of a win, kind of funny. right? I know, but um, so NC State's playing Miami. Miami has just been atrocious. Yeah, they came back on North Carolina, but that was I mean, literally, I've never watched a game where I've seen a team try to purposely lose a game, and that's what I thought I was watching with North Carolina. Yeah, get Carolina. into that a little bit. I thought I was. Me. Oh, I thought I was watching. I mean, seriously, that that was probably the closest thing I've ever seen to a college football team being like the 1919 Black Sox. I mean, it is. You get the fourth quarter. And I mean, everything, coaching, playing, just not even trying to tackle. Uh, they stopped throwing the ball, just running it. And I mean, they were trying to lose the game. Didn't you say they got an interception? At they, the end of the game, it was, a, it was a, a tip ball. One of the defensive linemen intercepts it to win the game, 45-42. And some of the players were reacting like they lost the game yeah. for North Carolina. I could not believe it. A lot of them were celebrating, but some of those guys were hanging their heads like, I thought they were trying to throw the game. Yeah, I I, I still feel now, that way. I, I will mean... say I will say <laughs> when Jalen Hurts was at Oklahoma and they played Baylor and they came back, um, that huge comeback win. Um, you know, over on the sideline, you know, Jalen Hurts can't even watch the 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 uh, 
the field goal at the end of the game. Yeah. I mean, he didn't even watch it, and then they win, and he's just got this like half smile on his face, just like I, I can't believe that. I well, can't believe let, we played so bad. So me, that could have been a little part. Let of me it. clarify. But, I'm yeah. not saying they purposely tried to lose the game. Yeah. But boy, that's what it looked like yeah. when you're watching. I got it. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. bad. It was so the bad. Optics were just I mean, bad. Yeah, very bad. Yeah. So um, anyway, going back to this one, I got NC State covering three and a half. I do too. Miami's just, they're terrible this year. Yeah. Um, they've lost their last two. Um, they did get a win against, uh, against Central Connecticut, 69 to nothing. But that's, you know, that, yeah. come on. Uh, then they lost to Michigan State. They did beat App State 25-23. But NC State, um, they're on a four-game winning streak. They are. And uh, they're just they're playing really good. They beat Boston College 33-7. They, they beat Louisiana Tech 34-27. Of course, the game against Clemson, um, two overtime game, 27-21. They beat Furman 45-7. So the teams that are... You know, obviously below them, they're doing what they're supposed to they do. They got Wake coming up in two weeks, Wake Forest. Yeah, so that'll be a good win game. Win that game, and you're, yeah. you're moving up. You um, and, and then uh, Mississippi State, they lost uh, 24 to 10. So um, I've got NC State easily in this. Okay. Uh, last game, Utah is a three-and-a-half-point favorite against Oregon State. Boy, I went back and forth with this one. Um, because I like Oregon State. I like their offensive line. I think I think they control the football. They run the ball really well. Yeah. Um, you know, but Utah with Cam Rising is a different team. Yeah. They are different. They are just like Oklahoma after Caleb Williams. I mean, it's just it's night and day difference. They were struggling at the beginning of the year with Charlie Brewer. Now they have Cam Rising, and he has just exploded. And um, but this is another game where I have to pick. Someone take Utah. Yeah, I wouldn't put any money on this because I think it's a toss up. Yeah, I really do. I, I just I don't I don't know where to go with this one. I want to take Oregon State. I really do, um, but I just think at this point right now, I think it's hard to bet against Utah. This, and the spreads this, don't matter because half of it was with Charlie Brewer, so it's a completely different. I know, I know, you know and that's where take. it's kind of tough. But I'm going to go with Oregon State. They're perfect on the year, three and zero against the spread at home. Um, and I know, I know some of you guys are probably yelling at your screen right now. Some of those games are against different competition, um, but we really don't know. I mean, with a different quarterback, it's just like with Oklahoma. Yeah. Like, Caleb Williams makes them complete, completely different. But Utah had to fight and claw their way back in the second half in that game. Mm -hmm. um, they had their crowd. Their crowd was amazing. I mean, yeah. The parts of that game that I got to watch um, before falling asleep, uh, man, they were just on fire. And I was jealous because I was like, why can't we get yeah. a little bit of that, you know? Um, but I'm going to take Oregon State. I mean, just being perfect on the year against, uh, against the spread at home. Um, and then Utah may have a little bit of a, you know, the winning hangover here. They could. So I'm going to take them. My reservation about Oregon State is that they lost to Washington State. Yeah. And that loss is hard for me to get over. And that combined with how Utah's playing, and yeah. I, I get it, but Arizona State also had like the 12th ranked defense in the country, and Utah was able to come back and score 35 points in the second half. So, yeah. or not 30, 35 total. They had seven, so they scored what 28 points in the second half. Yeah. That's pretty impressive against an Arizona State defense. Yeah, I just I, I see that as just kind of, you know, it, it was either confidence building or yeah. or they could have a letdown and they could. just think we're, could. we're here. You know, well, like I said, I think it was a toss up, so it, I'm yep. not surprised we're on both yep. either end of that. Okay, hey, that's our picks for week eight. Um, again, go check out our official sponsor, BUSR official betting partner. Go sign up, uh, busr.com/redzone. Uh, make a deposit, get some free play out of it, and um, you get know, a dinger on that. Dinger on the subscribe, <laughs> uh, like yeah. the video, comment, and then always check us out on social media. Uh, they're all right here. You can see where to go uh, on Instagram, Twitter, things like that. I was tweeting during all the games this week. I never get on Twitter, but I finally did. And I, yeah. So go there. You can see what I'm saying during the games. That's all I got. You got anything else? Um, yes. Okay, let's get through week eight and get on to that awesome week nine that, that's looming right around the corner. So yeah. that's all we have. Uh, Till next time, take care.